Um, if I could just kick us off, please. Uh, Sally, uh, the CEO of the Rule of Law Institute, has given me five minutes to speak. I'll do my best. No guarantees. So um, I'd just like to start with um, a welcome to country by acknowledging the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional custodians of the land on which we are meeting, and pay my respects to elders both past and present. Um, I would also like to welcome all of you to the what is the inaugural, and we hope there'll be many occasions after it, of the Robin Speed Memorial Lecture. And the uh, address will be given by Paul Kelly, uh, I think, around dessert time. Um, I really don't want to mention anyone else uh, except for Mrs Speed. And we're absolutely, the Institute is absolutely delighted uh, and honoured to have you present uh, at this function, um, Mrs Speed, and in particular, your very kind donation. You've paid for all the flowers on each of the tables, and thank you very much. I'd just like to say a few things about the Institute, in particular Robin. Um, Robin founded the, uh, initially the Rule of Law Institute, which has subsequently become the Rule of Law Education Centre in 2009. Um, I had, Robin interviewed me for a job at Speed and Stracey back in 1987, and I commenced work in January 1988, and I've been at Speed and Stracey ever since. He was the most wonderful teacher, lawyer to work for at Speed and Stracey. So in 2009, when, we asked, when he asked me to assist in what he was doing in, in, in setting up the Rule of Law Institute, I was only too happy to do so. When we first started out in 2009, we were getting sick and tired of all the powers Parliament were giving to the regulators, particularly to the ATO at that stage, Robin being a very a tax lawyer of incredible renown. And we thought that's where we'd start attacking. You, you, we would get these bills, particularly after 9-11, when the objective seemed to be every Parliament in the Western world, but certainly the states and the, and the federal government were increasing the powers of regulators. So we thought we'd attack there, and that was a sensible way of doing it. And you, you'd often get bills that come up, well, why are we giving these increased powers to regulators? Well, the usual reason was we were streamlining or keeping up with other regulators. So, but our, our attempts to speak to politicians, and we often gave evidence in uh, Senate committees and joint committees of federal and state parliaments, was pretty close to a, a waste of time. And we did this, we persevered for a number of years until uh, around 2014, when it was reasonably well known that 2015 was going to be the 800th anniversary of the Magna Carta, an incredibly important document for the rule of law. And um, it, we, we worked hard at that, and uh, I think it was mostly Robin's effort, but we ended up getting a donation of $30,000 from the UK government. We've never got one cent from the Australian government or state government, we've never thought that, but the UK government gave us $30,000. That's where the Magna Carta was signed in 1215. Um, and uh, with, I think, Sally's help, this wonderful um, um, display at the High Court was established, including uh, this Baron, who was, Barons were one of the parties who signed off on this, the, uh, the 1215 Magna Carta. Um, and it was designed like one of those little chess set pieces that were discovered a long time ago in Scotland that just got in their name. Um, and, and that stayed in the High Court for about a year, and it was opened with the, from recollection with the Chief Justice, a number of the High Court Justices there. So that was excellent. I think at around that time we were realising that it, there's no point talking to politicians and we should get into education. And Sally came on board, and, and since then we've never looked back. It's been quite an incredible uh, run at education. The, the most prominent of those things that, that, that Sally has organised is the um, Law Day Out. We're booked up at least six months in advance, and the Law Day Out is where legal studies students at high school and also now some commerce students at various high schools and private schools in New South Wales and other states now as well too, I might add, come into and are taken through a court by a teacher and often they speak to one of the judges or one of the senior barristers and they're taught about what it is like in court so it's not this big, huge surprise to them. And we, at the same time, we teach them about the rule of law and its importance. So that, and that's one of the key things that um, Robin and Sally both established. In addition to that, we do um, seminars. Um, our president, Margaret Kaneen, has recently given a seminar to teachers, and, um, uh, and that's been fantastic too. And the, the resources too that are relied upon by teachers that are on the website, if you ever get a chance to look at the Rural Law Education Centre website, you'll, you'll be astounded by the number of um, resources that teachers and students can access there and to help with their legal studies courses and understanding the rule of law. Um, <coughs> I might add that Robin's dedication to the rule of law um, did not just exist um, in the Institute. Uh, he was, he, he, he detested bullies. And in particular, I just like to mention the case of Murray Keir, who was 
uh, investigated by ICAC, you know, found that he had acted corruptly, of course, as you do. I did say recently to a, a New South Wales Senate committee with Chris Merritt, um, we were giving evidence, and I did say to them, the real problem with ICAC, it's a very simple problem, it's not complex. Saying someone's corrupt is tantamount to telling them they've committed criminal, some form of criminal conduct, and that's your problem there, because it's only, it's, it's only a committee of the executive, not of a court, but I, I got absolutely zero traction with that. They just weren't interested, not surprisingly. But in Murray Keir's case, what ICAC took it further, and they wanted to prosecute Murray Keir, and they therefore, off their own bat, instructed the Director of Public Prosecution of New South Wales, and um, uh, that went through the courts, and it, in fact, the local court, and Robin was down in court every day listening to the proceedings and supporting Murray to his absolute credit. There weren't many people who, who, who would take such an interest. And it was discovered during the hearing, of course, that ICAC had not provided all the documents they should have, including a considerable amount of exculpatory evidence to the defence, Murray Keir. And uh, the magistrate threw out the case and took a very rare step of ordering costs against um, the DPP, who were, of course, instructed by ICAC, and it wasn't, it, it didn't really, the problem didn't really lay at the, the foot of ICAC. And it, 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 that does remind me that um, in talking about something that's quite controversial at the moment, that's the, the Lerman prosecution, that even if a, a movement, um, as the Me Too movement is, is a very honourable movement and long overdue, but unless we're careful with that and appreciate the rule of law uh, and, and what impact we're having on it, it can have disastrous consequences, as in that case. And for those of you following the Soronoff inquiry down in the ACT, one of the big um, problems that have come out of that prosecution is the failure by the DPP to, to again hand over to the defence really important exculpatory evidence. Uh, and that was, seems to be what's really going to find out, I, I think, at the end of the day, why the prosecution was shelved. So um, the, the importance of not following the rule of law, it have, can have very serious effects on, on people's individual rights and livelihoods. And Robin understood that, but he also understood that ensuring the importance of the rule of law, um, uh, it, it was up to us. Um, I've often said, I think incorrectly in the past, that the, the judiciary is the most important aspect of the rule, it's, not, it, it's us. And it's up to us to fight to make sure that we have the rule of law. And I think the best example of that recently is in Israel, where the Netanyahu government has, um, was going to pass a law that gave parliament the ability to overrule judicial decisions. And that brought tens and tens of thousands of people out into the streets protesting against that in Israel. I don't know whether we do the same here in Australia, but that, that I think is the force of people. They were able to stop that amendment being made uh, in Israel. And I think it's been shelved probably for good. Um, if I can just come to a couple of administrative things then um, uh, else to do, uh, can I formally launch this book by that uh, the Rule of Law Education Centre has created called The Lost Parcel. Um, it's available for sale today. It's the, it represents really the first civil case in New South Wales, so the first civil case in Australia in 1788, um, uh, where two convicts, who one of which had been sentenced to death in England and that had been commuted, the other who'd got 14 years um, uh, and transportation to Australia, uh, they actually had a child and they brought the child and they came out to Australia. And one of the, one of the first ship boats, the Alexander, they weren't on that, they were on the friendship. Um, the, their bag was lost, so they brought proceedings against the master of the ship and the master of the ship, which was the Alexander, obviously had a very significant role and was a very significant person. But despite their incredibly low status as convicts, they were able to bring this case and ultimately won and got 15 pounds uh, in compensation for their lost uh, luggage, which would have been a lot of money, I, I assume, in um, 1788. So, that, um, so I'm going to launch that book um, uh, and um, uh, that's over there for anyone who wants it. In addition, Margaret Keneen's book, The Boxing Butterfly, is over there too. I've read it. It's an excellent book. I don't know how you do it, Margaret. It's an astonishing um, uh, recount of some of the trials you've, you, you've been in. Um, it's just extraordinary. Uh, also, Robin's book over there, um, which is on the rule of law, which he's the editor. He's also contributed to it. It's over on that table as well too, um, for those that are interested. Now, on your table, you will find a copy of the annual report of the uh, Rule of Law Education Centre, so if anyone's interested in seeing what we do, uh, that's on the table. 
Now, also on the table are topics for the table. Everyone has a different one of these. Now, these are very important documents, not to mention that it's what written on them, but also on the back you'll see there's a number. That's your lucky door number for today. So somebody is going to um, call out some numbers. I think it's Chris. Are you going to do that? And Right, and uh, give away some of those prizes. There's also a donate card, too, uh, on the table. Um, uh, and thank you very much. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you.